for me. Anyways, love you guys. I'm going to hand it back off to Naldo or Lonzo. Yeah, so who we've got on the show today, I think we're having Trading Tulips coming over with the uh, AVAX Recruitment Agency. And uh, you had a, just, a guest joining us as well today, didn't you, Josh? Oh, not yet. We're still in talks. Got to figure out when and where, which space. Um, and then if the Botcast wants to come up, Botcast got a... Uh, Got the nomin or won the nomination, not even nomination, won the the cock hackathon, um, in uh, I believe, uh, third first place, first place, I think. Yeah, he did indeed. Be good to get him up here today and go a little bit more in depth to that and what the plans are for the future going forward. He's coming up. Welcoming Clint from the podcast. If you're not familiar with Clint from the podcast, this is a uh, a show that has been going on here on Avalanche for the better part of two years almost. It seems uh, he could correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember it from a long time back. Uh, talking about the chicken ecosystem, having to do with some of the complex math and some of the plays, speculation, uh, uh, some alpha, you know, things like that, all having to do with that. And um, and uh, we're going to hand it over. How's it going, Bachcast? Yo, Bach, Bach, everyone. What day is it? Happy, happy Tuesday. Sorry to hear about the loss in your family, J-Hug. Sending you some prayers and well wishes to you and your family. Um, but shout out to the, the host, Alonzo Naldo, J-Hug, for always starting up this space. It's an absolute AVAX town hall, so really appreciate you guys. Um, we are seeing some some cool things developing uh, uh, with the, the Cock in You community. We, we saw a pretty nice rally today. If you've been watching the, uh, the charts, we're... we're we're up on the 24 hour about 20 23 percent but there was a post that came out i believe from some uh binance linked account indicating that you know top 25 projects that could potentially be listed on binance this year and cock was included in that image pretty cool to see so i'm thinking that that's kind of some of the speculation that's that's occurring around around cock not only that but you know, you have the ever-growing infographic. Shout out, shout out to Dano, uh, Dano. I'm sorry. Uh, shout out to Dano uh, for always making those threads and the infographic. It's it's really impressive to watch um, how much how much is being built around this community and how it's really solidifying itself as a mainstay. And that's not to say like you know the 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 cock hackathon, right? Um, I, I did put together a, a, a nice little presentation. It included a little bit more. Than uh, just daily Twitter spaces. I do currently run daily Twitter spaces. They are, I would say, a little bit more niche specific, right? So what Lonzo and Naldo J Hug, what you guys are doing is absolutely incredible. You guys are kind of really enabling a platform for the entirety of AVAX. As I look in the crowd, I see a tremendous amount of diversity, lots of different PFPs, lots of different people from lots of different projects. That that is a hundred percent necessary. That is something that uh, is 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 uh, really blossoming into uh, something beautiful. So really kudos to you. I would say uh, my spaces are a little bit more niche specific, um, a little bit more targeted. They, they started as daily spaces, just talking about the uh, the chicken ecosystem, as you guys know. Uh, uh, one of the top projects here on AVAX, Absolute Blue Chip, with their cornerstone game Cockfight, set to be released here in 2024. And that's not to be confused or intertwined with the Cock in You community coin. It has a very symbiotic relationship, but they are two separate projects, right? Cock in You was launched on December 7th of 2023, but the Chicken Project has been blossoming and, and blooming here on chick on the uh, avax ecosystem now since november of 2021 right so two years prior to the launch of this incredible community coin uh, or meme coin that is cock in you right so uh pretty pretty cool to see the developments and you know wanted to say uh, uh you know there are people that are building some um, pretty impressive things and s some of those were not uh, obviously uh, presented within the hackathon, right? We're not put together through a, a, an application and, and presented uh, like something like the Cocknet, right? Like what Stephen Gates and 
uh, uh, Johnny and what they're building with GoGo -Go Pool, right? These guys are actively working on the Cocknet. We've had a chance to speak with them on the podcast and got a chance to hear the excitement that Stephen has when it comes to um, building out that Cocknet and uh, that subnet for, for Cock. And if you really think about that, like th this yeah. is this is being actively worked on by some of the brightest minds here in the AVAX ecosystem, right? And it's incredibly aligned with where AVAX wants to go as a whole, right? Which is promoting the education of subnets, right? And Cocknet can very well be a, a, a very shiny and bright. Um, uh, it can be used as an example, and the level of exposure that, that that's going to come with that. I mean. I look at the chart and I look at where we're currently at. This is an 82 million market cap floor right now, right? We've we've pretty much rejected off of 60, 65 mil MC multiple times, right? We're now currently at 82 mil. And I look at the potential of what's coming up here in 2024. I look at how aligned everything kind of is. We're here in February of 2024. We're, we're, we're almost end of Q1, right? And, you know, you look towards the Bitcoin having, you look the election uh, here in the US. There's so many events here in 2024, and there's so many indicators to um, some incredible market conditions. And I just look at where where cock is currently positioned right it is it is it is absolutely primed and i ask myself is everything that is currently being built and everything that is projected to be built here in 2024 that is not even necessary right the cock in you has the perfect meme it has the perfect name right people look at the ticker and they laugh imagine when it's when it has to be said on the news right i hear people mention it on their on their twitter spaces they they don't want to say it they say the coq coin right it's it's funny it's mimetic it's it's it gets the people going you know to quote uh, uh the kanye west song right but um I, I ask myself is all of that priced in and uh, i don't think it is so i'll leave you guys with that but podcast you know there's or clint rather there's there's something interesting too with cock in you as that it, deploying a subnet basically allows the token to be used on its own l1 i mean like if this is the first time that you have ever been on avalanche or really getting your toes di diving deep into crypto it means like the cock in you token starts to instead of being competing with other tokens on other chains for instance um uh, Shiba Inu, which is on Ethereum, uh, it starts to more along, align itself with competing with like something like Doge, where it's its own L1. And, you know, transaction finality will be faster than Doge. Uh, I don't know what the fees are going to be like on Cocknet, but I would imagine it'd be, it would be cheaper than what's on Doge. And, and uh, you know, it's EVM compatible. That means that everything that you could do on Avalanche mint nfts set up DeFi protocols everything like that can also be there and i think that that's um a particular interest to a lot of people who are looking to uh to look at this coin uh in in a different light in regards to really good tech that's here on avalanche yeah i, I wanted to speak to that as well because i was going to ask um clint at which point do you think that, you know, cock stops being a meme coin and actually is just the token because of the utility and stuff being built around it and the fact that it's going to have its own subnet and stuff, it, will it still be a meme coin or, or does it just start to be a token at that point? That, that That's a good question, Lonzo, and I think like every coin for first starts off as a meme coin, right? Until, until there's value associated with the coin and until it no longer becomes a meme coin, right? So... I do look at everything that's being built, and I look at. I mean, that, that I think the time is 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 quickly approaching. But at the same time, the mimetic value of a meme coin is not to be underestimated, right? Like people love to be a part of a community, just for you know the kicks and giggles. They like to they like to just post memes. Like you guys remember the early days of cock? Like we hadn't seen anything about. Like we haven't seen anything like that. Um, on AVAX, where there was just memes just being blasted every single day. It was, it was a great time, great vibe. So I'm hoping to, you know, moving forward, obviously establish that there's way more beyond just a meme, right? But also, it's I feel like Cocking You does have a, a great balance of mimetic virality balanced with insane amounts of utility where there are again some of the brightest minds here in the space that are working
working towards, you know, building a subnet. And probably with that, you know, comes DeFi protocols and a whole bunch of bullish things that are going to be pretty cool to witness. We're all witnessing it live, which is pretty cool. Jump in here, Naldo. Sure, Clint. I was about to say, uh, are you? I know you. You got to be bullish on on subnet gaming, man. Like, I feel like that's definitely like you know we've been talking about this for a few years now. And I feel like it's definitely you know the the main thing leading you know spearheading like Avalanche gaming and you know just Avalanche as a whole like taking off in a, you know in a different level. Like when you can check the the charts and you see you know the leaderboards you know on you know, on all these different like coins that are going to be like Avalanche gaming tokens and you see you're gonna see like it really be up there because you know regardless we know how crazy gaming really is and how you know like everyone's you know basically a gamer once was or something like that so it's like you know the level that we can take it to is like literally like there's there's no level you know like we can really just like do anything it's endless possibilities oh dude so bullish so bullish on uh on gaming on avax for sure and you know, I've, I'm starting to expand my horizons. I'm starting to dive into other projects. I really, I, I did a glance uh, at Shrapnel, at but I really do want to take a deep dive into understanding their ecosystem a little, uh, on a deeper level. But there's some incredible games that are, that are uh, uh, emerging here in the scene. And uh, one thing that I'm really excited about is, Oh shit! Can you hear me? Yeah, we just so, lost sorry you. Sorry about that. You're back. Okay. No, you're good. Um, I was going to say one thing I'm I'm excited about is the Chickens Cornerstone game cockfight, right? Because at that stage, when we are able to initiate in a in a in a in a, in a duel in a battle, right? In a in a cockfight, chicken versus rooster, or rooster versus chicken, or chicken versus chi whatever it may be, I feel like at that stage, chicken will finally be included in this category of gaming on AVAX, and it will be reviewed and compared to as such, and looked at um, and compared to other projects in the past, and that's when I really feel like when people truly take a, a, a deeper dive into chicken, they're going to see how, how beautiful the game has been built out, how, how the foundation of this ecosystem or this economy, this mini economy that the chicken devs have really established within this chicken metaverse um how beautifully it's all designed and and everything that was built over this last two and a half years is kind of all leading to this cockfight game which is going to cause everything to come full circle all of the foraging all of the crafting all of these items all of this stuff that may not have made sense up until this point is all of a sudden going to come full circle with the release of the game so I, see, I include the chicken into the gaming on AVAX, but there are some uh, incredible projects. Is there anything that you have uh, your eye on, Naldo, specifically, um, that you're that you're uh, tracking closely? Well, you already know um, Shrapnel is, you know, high up on the list. Um, there's actually one that I was just looking at. I have to find it. But um, I don't want to butcher the name. But just got you know. Have you played Shrapnel at all? No, I haven't played it. I actually, I actually want to uh, play it, but I'm in the process of building a PC. So. Hell yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, man. I just want to briefly touch on something uh, that Clint talked about earlier is how, um, you know, most tokens, most coins out there have their own kind of like meme culture and they start out with that meme culture. My one of my first exposures to Bitcoin was like in 2013, 2014 on Reddit, which was Magic Internet Money, the Bitcoin wizard. And that's like a MS Paint sketch um, of like a wizard and then some words associated with it. Uh, it it's interesting in a lot of ways because, you know, it, memes have the ability just like, uh, uh, what is his name? Richard Dawkins or whatever that talks, he doesn't like it compared to like internet memes, but, um, that it has the ability to like move kind of like music does like through the radio, like it goes from one person to the next person. It becomes much more like community property or community intellectual property in, in a lot of ways. And it allows for those messages to be like, you know, expanded and, and sent out across the bandwidth that we have now on the internet.
Also, what up to Moonbags? I don't know if you're coding or not. What's going on? Oh, man, nothing. Just just chilling. How's it going? Yo, shout out Moonbags. Lucky. Absolutely moon last night. What was going on, Moonbags? Tell us. Tell us man, the alpha. Uh, people were vibing in the Discord. I'll say that. And uh, we have... We have some whales who have entered, which is going to make things interesting. Moonbags, I know you're actively uh, uh, building around around this, this lucky coin. Do you want to tell us some of the alpha that you got going on, some of the stuff that you got building that may be the reason why whales are deciding to make a splash and acquire some of the limited supply of 777 lucky coins? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to come on here every single day and shill it because I, I feel like that happens when I come on here. I just came up to hang out for a little bit, but I, I, we'll have some like actual announcements later this week um, and ne going into next week. I think that the high level is like I've really been trying to work with people and talk with people about how we create like a really interesting community that we can really grow into something pretty robust going into uh this bull market um i think that's one of the things with cock that the reason i jumped into cock so heavily when i did frankly is because i was pretty aware of the strength of the chicken community that already existed and i think that's going to help drive this whole thing forward and what i'm trying to do is like kind of build something from scratch which is a bit of a different process and challenge so that's that's gonna be a pretty uh interesting journey there's a lot of cool stuff that uh, is being worked on right now and we'll just like have to roll it out as it rolls out that was very cool and uh, if you just if you just uh joined us uh this is a Bax talk with uh myself lonzo aka Ruggy fresh my co-host Naldo and my co-host Josh Hughes. We've been talking to Moonbags and the podcast. Uh, all comments on here are not endorsements. They are not financial advice. Always do your own research. Uh, today as well, we're going to be speaking hopefully with Trading Tulips and um, AVAX Recruitment Agency as well as uh, we may have Four Fi in here as well talking to us a little bit about their new Eclipse subnet, which will be quite interesting. <laughs> So yeah, so Moonbags, yeah, I saw that spike myself last night, that was crazy, I saw my coin go up to like 3600 in value, and I was like, damn, but you know, I'm in this for the long play, so I thought I'd just hold in, let's just see what happens, and then, I don't know if there was a sell-off, or if the person who brought in big sold off straight away, or what, but yeah, I feel like that that was definitely dope to see that big spike on the uh, chart, and it was crazy. And we actually uh, yeah. seven 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 actually flipped uh, ETH price per coin by like a thousand dollars, which was insane. Yeah, I think it, there's okay. I I don't want to get too nerdy, um, and we shouldn't. We should go on to whatever other topics. But there's gonna be a supply squeeze issue with this at some point. Because it is sort of, I, I like the idea of exploring things conceptually, and this is sort of, it's a liquid coin, there's liquidity just like any other coin, but the supply and the vibe and everything is almost kind of like a community NFT kind of project vibe, in that, you know, if you hold a whole coin or three whole coins or whatever, you get access to stuff um, that other people don't. Um, so on and so forth. So, and that's going to continue to be built out. So, at some point, you're going to have a lot of people who have a whole coin or three coins or whatever, and don't want to sell any because they don't want to dip below a certain level. Otherwise, they lose access to things. And then, who knows? But there, I think you're going to see a supply shock at some point. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing myself. I was wondering about, you know, how how would it look when when uh, most of the tokens are in people's hands and there's even less uh, circulation out there. What what that's going to look like? Will it sort of like stop and just hold in price, or will we see like little sell offs and actual like demand increase and and more upside on the token?
Go for it, Josh. What about a market rundown? Do you think we're ready? Yeah, market rundown, 10.30, uh, 5.30 your time. Sounds right about right for now. Let's go for it. All right, let's go for it. I got to turn up the volume just a tiny bit, but not up too high. Here we go. First up, Kimbo. Or actually, first up is Cock In You. Cock In You showing a lot of support, as we've been talking about earlier. Up on the 24-hour, 25.48%. Market cap north of $83 million. It was just below $83 million coming into the space. has been building momentum since we uh, seen a little tiny itsy bitsy uh, little bit of a market retraction on that larger pump over the last 24 hours. Next up is Kimbo. Kimbo also following Cock Inu up. We have up on the 24 hour for Cock or Kimbo, uh, 12.17%. Market cap just shy of the 8 million at 7.6 million. Next up, OG Meme Husky, another dog token here on Avalanche, down on the 24-hour, 4.18%, market cap hanging out at 4.1 million. And then we have Gek Inu. Gek Inu is uh, sitting at a market cap of 1.8 million, down on the 24-hour, about 10.5%, but up in the last six hours, a uh, little bit north of 5%. Then we have Lucky, who's coming in fifth place uh, this week, uh, or at least today, uh, up on the 24-hour, 25.17%. As spoke about earlier, there was a giant god candle that happened late in the evening, my time, and uh, we've seen that price go you know, well north of uh, flipping Ethereum uh, for actual price per token. Market cap sitting at $1.2 million. Now we can go on over to a little bit of, actually, you know what? We'll cover NFTs in the next segment. This is Avalanche Talk. Great hanging out with all of you. If you haven't already shared this space with your friends, this is definitely the place to get some alpha, get involved in a community, know what's going on here in the Avalanche ecosystem, and chat with some super cool people. Uh, I'm going to hand it off to Lonzo or Naldo. And uh, also, thank you very much to the Botcast for uh, this uh, uh, music uh, suggestion, which worked out really, really well. Go for it, Botcast. I see your hands up. Yo, fantastic addition of the music to the market rundown. I absolutely love the touch. I wanted to say uh, AVAX just put out this tweet three minutes ago. They announced the AVAX Summit is going to be in Buenos Aires in, no, October, let's go! in October of 2024. <laughs> Hey, so, October works out so good for me. Bre- I got to get my tickets. News. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Good stuff. Where is that? Yeah, at? Uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina. That's a that's a long way south. I didn't even know. I I, I recently looked because I got some alpha about its location. And I was like, oh, how far away is that by plane? And it's like 21, 21 hours from my from my uh, from my airport up here. And I'm like. Whoo! That's a long plane ride. That's like longer than going to Japan. That would be like for me to go to like Afghanistan or something. That's wild. Wow, sounds like a really long flight. It sounds crazy, yo. Uh, let's get let's get stack up for a second and see what's going on with stack. We've got a little bit of time to fill quickly. See what's happening over there. What's going on, Stack? What's happening, Stack? You good? I don't know if Stack can hear me. Let me see some uh, emojis if you guys can hear me. Hey, what's up? Sorry, I can hear you. How's it going? How's it going, man? What's going on with you? Good, good. Um, not a whole lot. Just, just hanging out, listening to what's going on. Just watching the fallout from Soul being <laughs> on standby, and uh, just 
coming and chilling in the spaces. Um, we, I do have some news slash alpha I do kind of want to share. I don't know how much I can say right now, but um, we, you should come, people should come check out our Telegram or our Discord. We got some exciting stuff coming. So you definitely got some may, may or may not involve NFTs. That's all I gotta say. Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll have to keep our eyes out for that. I'll I'll say more when I can, but right now we're we're uh, we're just getting started. Well, well, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep this stage um I'm gonna keep this stage light until we uh get to the last half hour. So we'll rotate you out and see what are mobilizing good to give us right now. mobilizing good what's happening yeah i'm just trying to balance it all right now um i just launched a good token it started off pretty good um i think that was like three o'clock or eight o'clock utc and so far so good it's it's looking good uh i might talk to like rex after dark tonight trying to get the Info updated, trying to keep up with like eight channels at once. How are you guys doing? Yeah, we're doing great, man. Um, so exactly what is the good token? Can you break that down for us? Yeah, so trying to make it a little bit different than, than your average meme coin, more of like a utility and charity token. So there's a million supply. And that kind of links up with the, the bigger goal. We got this huge goal, basically since I started mobilizing good a couple years ago, uh, to to get like a million dollars, not for myself, but to give away. Um, and that's that's going to be a long battle. Um, trying to set up like almost like a hyperspace kind of seasonal approach uh, to raise money. There's, there's a charity tax on the token. Um, and yeah, so there's a million supply uh, kind of giving it up with, with airdrops instead of like a whitelist. So balancing like the health of the token and, and giving out good for, for kind of rewarding people for doing good in the space. Kind of, that can be a pretty generic thing, but I try to break it down like in the, the good docs that I wrote basically of like a even distribution. There's like 60% of the, the like, points you can earn or the good you can earn from fundraising initiatives there's 20 percent from like social and content creation and then 20 percent for like referrals and partnerships so trying to kind of get a little bit of everything at once uh you know i always like take notes i got like a a list of of all the people that have kind of earned some points so far and i'm always kind of like looking for for that next thing or like like for example uh cock um just announced the other day like a, a donorship IO, um, the, the partnership with the widget. Um, so I think that's pretty cool. And basically I want to set that up for good, like make it kind of a direct way to, to give to people, give to charity, give to directly to help people. Um, and yeah, that's just kind of been my stick and what I've been working on and hopefully it, it resonates with people and it's something that I want to be a part of and help grow. And yeah, we're just getting started. And uh, what charities are you going to be supporting? Yeah, so I try to break that down as well in my documentation. So far, with with the benefit of cock, um, and just like I have a friend, uh, kind of. So basically, with this like seasonal approach, so we got like season one right now, and uh, kind of every week I'll kind of break down some some good on Avax, some some good things happening in the space. And for me, my biggest thing is mental health. Um, man, you know, when you don't keep that in check, everything can go down. Um, I've had some, some crazy times myself. Uh, I really like Hoops and BMBB that host the Mental Health Matters space. I've um, been talking to them and Chicken Royal God about how we can sponsor them, how we can kind of like build that up to, to even impact more people. I'm um, talking to the Given Block. They have what's called a impact index fund. So just like 
you know, like the meme index we saw, uh, and ETFs, we know how that works, but, uh, basically they, they distribute it really well. Um, they kind of target, um, different funds. So, and they, they give to a lot of organizations based on their, their research. So kind of like almost like a hybrid, a little bit of DGEN charity. Um, when we can do good directly, we got some initiatives with that. We're working on an app of uh, like a wellness app. I um, mean, Dev, and yeah, and then when, when when we, you know, when someone else can use their money better, our funds better, then then we'll give to that. Um, use our cock, use our good, give directly to the the mental health fund. Um, trying to get a uh, tie directly with the giving block and and seeing what we can make happen. Yeah, hey, man. Sounds commendable, doing stuff for charity is great, having a token for people to be able to help the less fortunate is, uh, yeah man, I'll take my hat off to that, it's good work. Thank you, on, yeah, man. doing my best, They're trying to get like creative, I guess, um, in, in how we can efficiently raise funds and and almost make it a, a net positive for everybody. Like if you if you can give, if you can contribute in some way, we want to have incentives lined up. Uh, started pre-launch with like over fifty AVAX worth of incentives. Um, so that's part of earning good as well. In in an effort to kind of save the price action, there's going to be a way to exchange it directly for different NFTs, different meme coins. Um, and yeah, we just we just want to get the like that one percent. Like if we can get like one percent of like the best people on Avax, just a little bit of of some mint funds, some some like profits, and we just kind of target it to the the right place, and that could go a long way. Yeah, man, to hear. Well, good luck with all of that. I hope it goes uh, really really well. And uh, yeah, we're going to rotate and see what Walls on You has for us today. But thanks for coming through, man. Respect. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and Balls on You, they're, they're, they're a potential partner for sure. I've been talking to them for a while. And uh, kind of just the same thing, like thinking creatively, how we can use what, what little we have, what, or hopefully we have abundance. But uh, yeah, we want to kind of go beyond the meme and, and just figure out how we can use it for, for good. Yeah, man, 100%. All right, man, thanks for coming through. Hanks, what's up? I see your hands up. Uh, so this dude, is so, so bro just came up and said he launched a token, and he launched it in a specific way where I couldn't buy in in the first five minutes. But I'm all for charity, so. I'm chilling, bro. I woke up and, like, we had a new Ethereum for five minutes last night or something, and I woke up and you motherfuckers dumped it all the way back down. Not all the way back down. Y'all left it 50% positive for Hanks, which I appreciate. But we're trying to get $10,000 of tokens. Stop being selfish that's all uh, nice to see you back josh owen was doing impersonations of you and i was highly impressed i told him to put the uh gold slash blue version pokemon battle theme music in the background since we didn't know what you were using and we didn't want to know what you were using we were going to come up with our own and, and clone our new jake anyways we're doing good bro yeah, I couldn't make it yesterday for, for some reasons, but no big deal. I, I'm glad that almost Owen came by to, to, to play substitute. I think that that's always fun, too. Also, Hanks, the black color around the emoji for the hand, you should change that to be the background color of the night mode uh, screen here, because it's like ever so slightly off. Was it me? Appreciate that. How you doing, trading tulips? Welcome to the show, bro. How's everything with you today? GM, I'm good. How's everybody doing today? Good. Amazing, thanks. Ecosystem seems to be bouncing a little bit. 
Good to see. Yeah, it's good. Is my audio quality good today, bro? I'm trying to stay somewhere in the West Wing for you, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Don't be, don't be going over to the East Wing, man. I mean, the amount of money you got, you could at least, like, you know, invest into, like, a, a booster on that side or even install another Wi-Fi network on that side, you know? You, you're kind of tight for, for, for a multi-millionaire, bro. <laughs> hey, I, I just, first off, bro, I have to give props to the broadcast. The way you speak about cock is, is poetic. You, you, it's fascinating to see, really. I, I have to buy more because you guys are mentally ill. It's it's facts, but I appreciate the compliment, man. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, man. No, honestly, you the way you speak about cock is Shakespearean, bro. <laughs> hey, well, I do nightly spaces every night, 9 p.m. EST. I do a little bit of a riff here and there. You know, I try to get the community involved, but Look, daily doses of bullishness are needed, especially, you know, when we're in a down market for quite a period of time. But the conviction remains, nonetheless, cock will rise. Uh, but you know, I got just what you need, you know, I wanted He said you were mentally ill. You don't need a straight jacket. You need a cock jacket. Yeah. I had to say that. <laughs> Go ahead. To the I, I wanted to, uh, to preface uh, trading to a uh, uh, remember last week on the space, Lonzo and Naldo, remember when we were, I jumped up and we were talking about checks and then the, the transition to check, right? There was, there was the launch of checks, which was a rug and that was misconceived with the launch of check, which trading tulips is about to talk about right now. So I wanted to, to preface it, uh, with that. It's, it's a, it's a pretty beefy liquidity token. So. I'm going to pass it to trading tools, but interesting stuff that you're about to talk about. I got some questions, too. I know you're not a part of the team, but I do have some questions, so I'm going to pass it. Yeah, I, I'm not directly on the team. I am helping them. They're, they're good guys. I've known them for a couple years now. They were connected to me by people in my DAO, so um, they came to me and said that they finally had some time to kind of do a fun project and get integrated with uh, people on Avalanche because they've been wanting to build there is what they told me. So um, basically, they asked what should they build. And at the time, this is about, I don't know, a month and a half ago or something, everybody was talking about Eggs Fork. And I was like thinking to myself, I was like, well, maybe if you guys did this right, it could do well, right? And then it took them kind of too long, I think. Because, uh, anyway, th my point is, is uh, by the time they launched, even with all the marketing, and, and I'm sure everybody here has seen it, maybe a glimpse on their timeline, you know, and they're struggling to get holders. So uh, I figured maybe get them to come up here and, and talk about what they're trying to do, and I can help with any questions. I'm still advising the team, kind of helping guide them on how to, do something useful with, with what they're doing with, with what they're building rather than be a Ponzi, which is what it seems like a lot of people are thinking right now. Right? Um, but yeah, check token launched. There was this, a rug that was plural. The team shifted and launched check token. That was not plural. Um, what you guys have any questions? So yeah. to start what, off, or should I, just what's the name of the project? Avalanche Recruitment Agency. And where where can they where can people find general information about Avalanche Recruitment Agency? Uh, on their website, there's a link to the media article. Let me can we pin something here? I'll, I'll pin something. Just one second. Oh, I got to do it from my phone. That's a pain. Let's see. They're here. Can we invite them up to speak? I think we have a CM on the account right now. Yes, I see him down in the audience if Lonzo wants to get him up here. Yeah, I've been inviting them. Uh, stage Fred. Okay. I'll ask. I'll see what's going on with that. Hang on. Let me uh, pin this tweet. 
All right, we got them up. What, what I was interested to know is uh, when I saw that it was a, uh, when I saw that a Bax recruitment agency was a fork of, uh, was it the eggs thing, that chicken butt type thing? Um, what I was really interested to know was how they had implemented changes to that and what the differences were and like were they going for more sustainability of the protocol and stuff and like how how they really went about doing that. Yeah. Yeah, let, let me touch on that because that's really what I helped them with was making this not a pump and dump Ponzi. I just pinned the quick links for them. You guys, everybody, if you're interested, to check it out. That has all the links on it. But uh, so the things that are different. So like eggs, the traditional node project, which this is not. Let me just say that. But the traditional node project prints a, a static amount of tokens to a, a, a holder of a quote-unquote node. The nodes cost a static amount of tokens, usually like 10 tokens, and they print you like 6 or 10 tokens per day. Most of these people are just trying to take tokens off of the market. They end up selling tokens on the market. They have a bunch of nodes themselves, and they're just dumping on people as this is happening. So, like, there's no real way for this to sustain. There's no cap to the amount of nodes that can be made. It just goes on and on and on infinitely until the token goes to zero. They're, 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 there's no max cap on the mint tokens. Nothing. So, essentially, you get diluted into obscurity and this token goes to zero. So, what they changed is dynamic node pricing. First of all, node supply is capped. It's not, they're not nodes. We'll call them jobs. They're NFTs. They're yield-bearing NFTs. And if you have a job, you print X amount of tokens based on the amount of tokens in the reward pool. More similarly to like a liquidity farm pool, right? Where if somebody has a huge position in that liquidity pool, or in that farm, they're going to dilute your emissions because, you know, or if, if there's a bunch of different users who deposit money into that pool, it's going to dilute the emissions equally across all the liquidity in the pool. Point being is it's not a static amount of tokens printed infinitely forever. It's, it's, it's a set amount of tokens that are, that are already minted, a finite supply, that are distributed evenly across all node holders or all, all job holders. And the price of the jobs also are dynamic and they scale with the price of the check token. So like, as the check token goes down in value, it costs more checks to create a job. This way you have no destabilization of the protocol when if there's like a token, like nukes in price, it allows people to buy cheap tokens and make cheap with the previous model. You could make a bunch of cheap nodes and print a bunch of tokens, which completely just dilutes the entire protocol and like kind of kills it. So they're protected against that because as the check price falls, it costs more checks to create a, create a job. Essentially, no matter if you purchase at a high price of check or a low price of check, you're entering at the same price in USD valuation or roughly about the same. <laughs> and the APRs are four digits still right now. Even with the market cap circulating, I think it's like 400 or 350K right now. You can see it's kind of finding support around this level, show, showing stability. People are still selling emissions. There's thick liquidity. There's a token tax that was introduced. The token tax is used to automatically add more liquidity, burn supply, as well as feed the reward pool for their V2 that comes after the 90 day emissions, which is gonna be based off real yield and actual fee revenue that's generated through what they're building. Yeah, but cost you go. Sorry. So those are, the, those are the main differences. I was yeah, just that say. sounds good. That sounds definitely like they've uh, made some improvements to the model and made the model more sustainable. Um, but cost. How, uh, what did you have to add? Yeah, um, 
I mean, I've been following this project since launch. Um, uh, you know, uh, be participating within the chicken ecosystem over the last two years, you know, chicken, you could argue, is a note that lays egg every single day, and we burn that egg within the ecosystem. There needs to be a utility or a reason to, to hold the emissions token. When I look at the tokenomics and the launch that these guys these guys had, right, you look at the check, you can pull it up on deck screen, right? You look at the liquidity to market cap ratio, you got 261,000 in locked liquidity for what's well, going to be 90 days, right? And the market cap is at 342,000. So you pretty much have what, like a, a well over 50%, 60% of the locked liquidity. So you, I'm looking at uh, some people that are doing the math on this. They launched with 10% of the circulating supply. So you have 1 million uh, finite tokens that are going to be emitted over a 90 day period. Let me, let me Go ahead. Real quick, it was 17% total, which is what was needed. The documentation, that medium, the guy kind of front ran it. But 17% uh, was minted, added to, well, 100% was minted, 17% was added to liquidity, and the other 83% uh, was put into the reward for gotcha. you. And now, and that's just be. Uh, just to make it go ahead. make the numbers work. So that reward pool with the 83% is distributed to all node holders over a 90 day period. Is that correct? Correct. So, so this is like, I'm looking at the launch. I'm looking at the sustainability of this. Even if people every single day claim and dump because there's a 50% claim tax and then a 5% buy and sell tax, you basically have 20% being removed um, on a daily basis. Uh, from that 1% being emitted. So it's basically 0.8% that's being emitted and then dumped. If you do the calculations, which some people have, it can take a toll on the price up to, what, 4% per day. So my question is, like, everyone that's already participating and has a node is in a good position, right? But one thing, one one very important question that the team has is, what? why would somebody hold check? Like, why? Because I can't, I, like, I, I struggle wanting... To share this project because I know that anyone coming into this project right now is at a disadvantage getting uh, dumped on from the people who are, who are early participants, as is with every note. We can look back at the 2021 cycle. We can look at own forks. We can look at rebase tokens. There's so many case studies that we can reference. Uh, again, I, I do find things that, you, that this project has done well to start off with, and it has solidified a level of stability that will be in place for node holders over this next 80 plus days now that it, that it has uh, uh, for these tokens to be emitted. But what's the case for holding check? Yeah, and that, that's the question that they've been getting a lot of, and the, they're working on that design right now. So the goal for them is, first of all, getting single stake set up that is going to be earning protocol fees and giving um, giving governance. What's the protocol? And then... What's, what's the that? protocol? What are the protocol fees? The, that's We're talking about the token taxes okay, and the claim, ta the claim taxes from the, the, node, the node holders, okay. etc. And the other thing I'll add is that anybody right now can enter for pretty much the same price that most people made notes or, or jobs. Mm -hmm. it's, and you can earn APR, like despite everything else, you can still, over the 90 day, at what's expected, you should still outprint, even, even with no buys, should still outprint what your deposit is. And also, and that's, that's the something to note as well is that you're buying an NFT, right? And that NFT can be sold on third place marketplaces like Trader Joe and Hyperspace, right? Correct. So you're not you're not locked in. You're not locked in. And the other thing I want to add is that these guys are serious about making this into a real ecosystem. They were really inspired by Chicken. They came to me and they're like, "We want to be like Chicken, where we come out and people think we're a joke." And then over time, they start to realize that this is not a joke, you know. And they, they're they trying to get a foot in the door by building bridges with communities on Avalanche, having fun. They swept some steadies. They're doing the community meme thing where they got the steady guys and the AVAX recruiter dudes. They're really trying to assimilate with the, with the people on chain. And that's for a reason, right? So... I have confidence in what they're designing. I'm going to be able to 
be help, you know, I'm going to help to guide them through the process and make something cool. But what I will say, I can't drop too much off of it, but what I will say is staking for check token will give users a receipt token called Rcash. And Rcash has, they have plans for utilization of Rcash. Rcash is basically going to be an auto compounded staked version of like a liquid staked version of the check token. And the goal is to target um, like a 20 to 50% APR by just holding the Rcash token. And then the Rcash token can be used in other liquidity pools and DeFi. It's going to be wrapped. It's not going to have any token taxes. So it can be used on a VEAMM like Faro for, with, with uh, a gauge where they can bribe the gauge with check tokens and Rcash to get uh, emis emissions in non-native tokens for the treasury, which they can turn into real revenue to help boost their, their yield for stakers and all sorts of stuff. So these guys are actually serious. Are they up here? I, I, my phone is yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yes, they are. Hey, everyone. How's it going? Who needs a job? <laughs> Let's go. Love I don't even know who's behind there. I think you got Sev. Yes, indeed. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm one of the community moderators over at Avalanche Recruitment Agency. I like to role play, so you'll find me LARPing as Donna at the front desk. If you're checking us out in the Discord, we're having some fun over there. Tulips definitely knows more about the, the specifics of the project that, than I do. But seeing all the burn metrics, when I look at the checks um, price chart and seeing how initially we just skyrocketed as people were just aping and aping trying to get in as quickly as possible to buy the highest job level tier which we sold out of also we sold out the pre-sale and as Tulip also mentioned people can still mint at nearly the same price as pre-sale and we've just barely began printing check so I don't know I like what's been happening. I see if you go on deck screener, you'll see people selling their emissions and, and yet we found support. And I believe to this date, we still have burned more check than has been um, coming out through emissions. So that is a couple things I wanted to say. Thank you, Donna or Seb. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah man i think the culture of the project is cool too like the 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 meme is the meme has legs in my opinion just on its own i definitely like the theme in it and it fits into web3 because uh, a lot of these guys in web3 actually do need a job um i i was really looking forward to uh i was really looking forward to this project and i kind of just i kind of my interest sort of like feigned as it was kind of taking a bit long to come out and then there's so many things going on so much stuff coming out so quickly that by the time it actually came out i i kind of missed it and i've uh not well, been fading it since but i've been sort of uh slightly confused as to what was going on with it could i still get into it did i have to be on a list or i i just i just was like i just didn't know enough information I'll, I'll tell you this, there is a growing group of strong, like, holders in, in the community that I'm noticing. This, it's a start of small, but it's growing, and these people are like, I'm diamond handing, I'm waiting for single stake, they're going to be staking their whole balance, these guys have upgraded all of their shit, and they're, because they're, they're communicating with the team, and the team's been dropping little tidbits of alpha in the chat, people are paying attention in the discord which not too many people are right now so i honestly believe that there's a huge disparity here between actual value and realized value and this is like my favorite type of investment so i've been kind of just quietly accumulating check at these support levels while everybody fades because once these guys actually deliver some real shit coming up like the single stake with backed by fees and the r cash and some DeFi or something with a gauge on Pharaoh, you know, I, who knows what can happen, right? Yeah. So, uh, I like to be well, positioned. I definitely, I definitely do like the branding and the culture, and it seems like a very interesting project. Uh, the team seemed quite serious. I like the execution of it, and not financial advice, of course, but I'm definitely going to be keeping my eye on this project, and 
be great to have you guys come through and give us uh, updates and stuff in the future. But we've uh, hit um, 11 o'clock now. So this is around about the time we get another market rundown from Josh. And then uh, after that, maybe we can go to a couple more questions. If anybody in the community has questions, um, just put them uh, in the space and we can uh, ask the questions of Avalanche recruitment while we still got them here. And then after that, we're going to roll into a little bit of questions and stuff with Forfy and see what they've got going on at the moment because this is another project we're super interested in as well. There's a gaming subnet they're going to be releasing and all sorts of stuff going to be going on in that ecosystem. So we'll get on to them next. Uh, Josh, are you ready for another market rundown? Yeah, let's hit it up. All right. <laughs> We got Cocky and You coming up on the 24-hour, now 25, almost 26% at 25.87. Market cap is sitting at $83.2 million. Next up is Kimbo, the dog that does not puke in your shoes. We have uh, Kimbo up 16.50%, also following uh, Cock in You upwards. And market cap is sitting at a seven point nine million. It's actually almost ready to pop the eight million. Next up is Husky OG Meme Husky uh, coming in for market cap at four point one million. Down on the twenty four hour four point three eight percent, but up on the six hour about a half. We do have Gak Inu. Gak Inu. Uh, Trying to find some support down there at the 1.8, 1.5 million dollar range. Uh, support trying to find over the last 24 hours. Down on the 24 hour, 12.64 percent, but up on the six hour, four flat. And then last up is Lucky. Lucky had, as we were talking about earlier in the space, a huge god candle. As uh, as Moonbag said, whales have entered the chat. Um, and up on the 24-hour, 46.30%, but down on the 6-hour, about 9%, and market cap is just north of $1 million, sitting at $1.1 million. That was your market rundown, um, and uh, I'm looking forward to the rest of this conversation. In the last segment, we're going to cover a little bit of the NFT action going on here on Avalanche, and uh, also, if you're not going to Buenos Aires and... Uh, not looking at hotels and and uh, and other stuff while we're listening to the space. Um, it's going to be a good time. I will say that uh, Clint, I, and a lot of people around here are going to be going to a bar and having some drinks. Anyways, love you guys, and uh, we're going to hand it off to Naldo or Lonzo. That was your market update. I'm Jay Hug. And as he said, that was our market update from our market analyst, Josh Hughes. Thank you very much, Josh. Amazing market rundown, as always. Now back to uh, Trading Tulip and uh, Avalanche Recruitment Agency. Is there uh, any other updates you would like the community to be aware of? Or any, uh, you know, who they need to follow, where they need to go to find out information, that sort of thing? There's a couple of uh, things. Uh, Tulip's kind of jump in for one second. Go ahead. Yes, I mean, hit him. There's a couple points that I would like to point out. And one is that um, the team took zero allocation, either for jobs or for the tech token. There's also zero allocations for influencers and that type of thing. No one got anything for free, and the team only makes money if the project sits, succeeds. And they've been delivering updates since the start. Not to mention the launch was incredibly smooth. The tech they're putting behind it is excellent, and it's complicated. Multiple contracts, multiple NFTs. So I think they're slaying it. I just want to throw that out there. I would agree, dude. Um, they, they're constantly delivering updates, dashboard updates. There's been multiple updates on the website since launch. Um, they're taking feedback from the community. The, the only fees that are accumulating currently are small amount of fees that go for marketing wallet and team wallet so they can actually try to sustain this over time as you know as long as it's successful but it's only paid if, if the protocol works and people start partaking in it so like just like he said said it's a very honest design um they wanted to kind of piggyback off of the chicken 
narrative, the way that they turn from meme kind of like yield Ponzi into actual res like respected ecosystem project, you know, that that's spoken about often when people are talking about avalanche and anywhere you go when anybody's talking about it. So, I mean, the, the potentiality here for, for something to, to <laughs> something unexpected to happen is, is large, I would say. And that's kind of where my bet lies with this. But like I said, all I can do is, is advise the team and hope they continue to deliver. But uh, thus far, they have been doing exactly that. So if anybody has questions, please ask away. Uh, I'm just to jump in here. I did see Hans had his hand up there a couple minutes ago. Uh, I don't know if you still have that question on here on your mind, but I, I'm loving this conversation. Wait, wait, wait. One, did you just call him Hans? Holy crap! Hey, wow. All right. Well, I have to apologize. I'm running on fumes right now. Jesus Christ! I uh, assumed you were a German bloke. I don't even understand why I'm Canadian. I don't even know any Germans. But hello, Hanks, and hopefully, hopefully, you saw that question. We get that question answered for you. That that actually. Did he call me Hans he the Rugger? And that that's a. <laughs> I called you Hans Gruber, the uh, the villain from Die Hard. Uh, Die Hard. That, yeah, that's, that's right. That's, that's a, a. I was the only person suspicious of that, Hans. That, that <laughs> kind of hey, hey, bro, hey, bro. I got nothing to say, but I apologize. My bad. I don't know why I read hates as Hans, but there you go, my German brother. Yippee, I O K A. Go ahead, go ahead with your spill, bro. It's no big deal. <laughs> no, you had your hand up, Hanks. Go for it. Oh, so I just want to let you know. I'm here to save AVAX. Oh, All right, um, he's the Batman of fucking AVAX. Oh, you chain talked over about here. Him earlier, Josh. I got you, bro. I got you. Um, please still be here. Pleb, P L E B, Pleb for life. You won the um Ferdy Friends whitelist today. I already DM'd you, but you didn't DM me back. What? I don't know what you're doing, Hold on. but get back to me. Oh yeah, I'll get I'll get back to you in DMs. No, no, not you. Ple oh. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> that wasn't the room you addressed me. Anyway, it is. It's my bad, my bad. Okay, so, um. Alright, yeah. so let's move on. Let's move Please on. Me. Hanks, Hanks, why haven't you bought Check Token? What? Why have you not purchased the Check Token? Uh, personally, you sure you want to go through this? <laughs> Give me. Um, I I need a, I need questions right, to it answer. Was the, uh, it was. All right. So where 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 I got kind of lost is the um. I guess the couple of days of like uh, in between posts and stuff, and just not seeing them on the timeline. That's kind of what what uh not turn me away. Just kind of made me forget a little bit. Like Naldo kept reminding me. I was like, I don't know what they got going on. Like Naldo was on the ass. He was trying to jump in, and then it just kind of like you said. You already kind of said it. You know, it took a little bit longer than expected, but. You know, that's, uh, let's break it down, and we'll see. Maybe we can get Hanks in there. You know, okay, so you're not actively fading it. You just kind of lost active interest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I asked the question. You, you should know that I was interested. I asked a question in your chat the other day, but nobody answered it. They kind of sent me a link, and then they said connect wallet, and I was like, uh, I'm doing something. I got too many chats to keep an eye on, bro. I got... I got it. Yeah, no, it was a lot of sheep to lead to pasture and shit. But yeah, no. Um, I'm talking those spaces now, so that's a lot different, bro. So now I can really like see what's up with them. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a look go and check that out. So uh, yeah, uh, I, basically, I want to move on now to the next section where we start. Uh, we speak to Fourth Life for a minute. We want to find out about um, what they got going on with their project and the launch of the Eclipse Gaming Subnet. How you doing, Fourth Life? What's going on with you, buddy? Love it, love it, love it. Hello, hello, hello. And once again, another apologized apology to Hanks. Uh, you know, sorry again, Hans. Uh, I'll try not to call you that, but hopefully you got a question for us. Um, yeah, man, uh, we are currently uh, hard at work developing out, uh, a, you know, our AVAC subnet. Um, this name is Eclipse. Uh, essentially, what we are is we're trying to build the CNET for gaming. Um, we have uh, we're onboarding a multitude of different gaming partners to bring their games, their communities over to our subnet. 
um, and introducing a bunch of ecosystem-wide tools, uh, providing infrastructure and value towards gamers and game, uh, games as a whole. Uh, one of them being our predominant uh, uh, product that's going to be launching with our mainnet, uh, being Game Loop V2, uh, which is an innovative burning model that allows users to burn in-game emissions from Project A uh, to open loot boxes and receive perks and assets from new games on Project B. Uh, it acts as both a dual discovery mechanism as well as burning mechanism, um, and we're really, really proud about being able to offer this communal aspect, this communal building chain uh, to uh, help uh, push uh, push forward uh, the future of Web3 gaming. Dope, dope. Um, we've had a conversation before, and um, we're talking about um, helping on onboard games onto the um, um, onto your subnet. Now, what, what's the benefits of uh, gaming teams partnering up and launching their their uh, games, their DApps and stuff on the um, Eclipse subnet? Love it. I mean, we have a few different perks here to be offered. One, obviously, as a two-year-old plus project in this space, now we've built up a very large size of the community behind us. There's a lot of cross-promotional and cross-community you know, uh, cross -community building mechanisms. But on top of that, we have not, and I'll give a little bit of alpha here on this space today, we have not formally unveiled our grant program, uh, nor the list of tools and capabilities that we have. Um, you know, in fact, one of our little-known utilities is our cro uh, custom cross-chain messaging system. Uh, so upon mainnet, uh, users are going to have an incredibly easy process onboarding and offboarding uh, different assets from C-Chain to Eclipse to about eight different EVM chains all upon launch. Uh, we're essentially trying to make that onboarding process as well as discoverability and, you know, user base increases um, as easy as possible to allow users Sorry, I called her. Uh, to allow users to, uh, you know, really focus on building good, cool, and awesome games, while we focus on providing, you know, really dope infrastructure. I have a question. What if you have someone who can build the assets and probably make a Unity WebGL game? Could you provide like a assistance through the grant program as well as like connecting the dots to devs? Um, to like deploy a Web3 game for someone who has that kind of experience. Absolutely. I mean, one of the major things that we want to do is we want to be talking to a lot of these, especially, in, you know, indie developers in the Web2 space that have smart, intelligent ideas on how to add in Web3 functionality into their experiences. We're not fans of just the standard play to earn, farm an in-game token, something that has no intrinsic value, and we're not fans of shoehorned Web3 elements being added in. Um, I think interoperability between different gaming experiences and us being able to build, you know, standardized infrastructure to facilitate that is going to be incredibly valuable. Um, but on top of that, we want to directly work with these, you know, Web2 founders, get them connected with high-quality Web3 devs, allow them to, you know, enter into the Web3 uh, world with a, a little to no friction, um, essentially giving you almost a white-labeled approach. On, um, on the subnet, will there be uh, like an NFT marketplace by itself, or will you be using something like Layer Zero and bridging from the subnet out to uh, transact for the NFTs? We actually have a full cross-chain marketplace live now, so we're very excited about that coming to Eclipse Mainnet on uh, our launch day. Same thing with our DEX and liquidity provisionings. Um, so, you know, while we've worked out cross-chain communication, we have the ability to frictionlessly onboard and offboard user assets between different chains. Um, we wanted to make sure that when we're introducing a major product like a mainnet of a project agnostic gaming subnet, that we're you know, focusing and delivering the core values and the core products that you'd expect to have on any kind of blockchain. Easy ability to swap, easy ability to farm, easy ability to stake, as well as all the other custom perks that come in, in, innately with, you know, the uh, niche development uh, and customizability that subnets bring. Have you got a chance to play any of these games that will be deployed on the subnet? Um, yeah, I mean, some of the games obviously are still in pre-production. So, you know, there's limited gameplay experiences, but other ones like, you know, for example, some of our partners over there at Hatchy Pocket, um, you know, have really cool gameplay experiences. Uh, same thing with our friends over there at Bitfighters. Um, you know, we're currently in talks with some larger established AVAX projects as well. Um, things like DeFi Kingdoms and the Chicken Ecosystem. We're really optimistic about being able to, you know, really focus on translating our Web3 space from this isolated island approach where we've had historically all these dis disjointed 
you know, independent communities to a much more communal group. We all grow, we all succeed, a rising tide lifts all ship scenarios. What's your favorite game that's going to be deployed so far? Uh, unfortunately, I'm not able, uh, until we announce uh, our gaming partners, I'm not able to announce it specifically, but there's a very cool RTS game uh, that we're very, very uh, optimistic about coming to Eclipse and launching on Eclipse. See, I was, I was trying, I was trying to pull the hey, you I was were trying. super close, J-Hugs, you were super close. Hey man, you're making me watch myself right now, you know, I, I don't want to make a mistake and have the rest of my team absolutely pissed off at me. It wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> Uh, one of the questions I have about, like, uh, specifically, like, blockchain gaming is, like, um, you know, a lot of people complain about, like, that pay-to-win scenario that you might see from some of the Call of Duty games that happened a couple of years ago, as well as a lot of other games that come out with microtransactions. How, um, how are you guys working with teams being advisors in a lot of ways, like, uh, like allowing people like an entry point that might be low, but also allowing people like, uh, you know, the ability to move up and not have to compete with uh, maybe someone who has a giant bag. Yeah, I mean, it really depends on the individual game. Uh, but when we're talking about, you know, uh, games coming in, free-to-play is the predominant magnet that's going to increase your user base just innately because you have a free-to-play experience. Um, we think, you know, things like adding in player-owned assets and allowing those assets, you know, NFT assets to be upgradable um, to increase those uh, values uh, behind those assets, that's really where we see, um, you know, the future of our industry going. Um, we want to, you know, heavily focus on you know, creating frictionless environments and, you know, prioritizing the earning capabilities of the financialization of these games secondary to the gameplay experiences and allow these, you know, in-game economies to flourish um, with, um, you know, uh, uh, the growth of the value of these games uh, as a whole. Um, you know, one of the things I think is, you know, s something really important to, to, uh, to note out on here um, is... A lot, most Web 2 users hate Web 3. Most Web 2 gamers hate Web 3, hate uh, NFTs, hate the, uh, you know, the way that we market out these gameplay experiences. And so we're trying to really form that, you know, Web 2.5 bridge between, um, you know, Web 2 gamers venturing into Web 3 with very smart Web 3 implementations. Um, I, I think the days of shoehorning, you know, whatever technology you can into a gameplay experience are over. Do you think that, uh, well, which do you think has a, a larger market cap uh, in regards to gameplay, like aesthetics, cosmetic skins, things like that, or utility? Mm. Yeah, no, no. Well, I mean, you know, when we're talking about what's driving these values, take a look at the CSGO market, right? Uh, CSGO skin market. Take a look at the Minecraft skin market or the GTA 5 skin market. Um, cosmetics are, the, you know, the real thing that people are going to speculatively feel money into. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, these things can't be, you know, uh, items that dramatically adjust or, you know, interfere with the gameplay experience. <sighs> And that's a really good way to subvert, like, the play to win, too, because if it's just the same gun, just has a different color or whatever, you know, it, it works it works the same. Say it has Absolutely. the exact utility. Look at these in-game economies. Like, I always like to use this example. Look at the CSGO skin market. This is over a billion dollars in the secondary market for purely cosmetic items. That is the future of monetization within games, especially Web3, because we, now we can take these assets outside of these enclosed ecosystems and actually be able to control and own them. Ideally, as infrastructure plays like Eclipse comes out, we have far more in the way of interworking, um, you know, interoperability between different gameplay experiences. So ideally, you could bring asset A into, uh, you know, asset through game A into, uh, into game B in some way. Um, that is, you know, is what really excites us about the future of Web3 gaming. Adding in bullshit, you know, fractionalization or bullshit, you know, just ways that you can earn or farm an in-game token. Um, these are lessons that I hope we've all learned from last cycle. Um, you know, just like how we as a node project learned from last cycle. So have you guys been talking to like the GoGo -Go pool people yet or, or uh, making uh, some documentation to how to uh, validate that subnet when it goes live for, uh, for your actual token? I, I love it. So we are actually starting our outreach to GoGo -Go pools.
we do love the idea of fractionalized validating. Um, at least at the launch here for our mainnet, the foundation, our foundation will be releasing our mainnet with five validators or, uh, active. Uh, this allows us to perform network upgrades without any kind of downtime and you know th things like that. Um, but as we're onboarding new gaming communities and as we're onboarding new games and we start to see the transactional spikes happen, we want to scale our validational abilities with oncoming games. So in an ideal world, we want our gaming partners to be as invested into the chain as possible. We want them to help control a lot of the validation of the chain, and then we want to be able to open up that validation to all the individual community members through either individual whales wanting to be validators or through factionalized offerings like GoGo Pool. Well, I think, uh, you know, a lot of people out here on C-Chain, you know, who might actually have a validator are looking for some additional options because you'll still get like the 7 to 8% APY on validating plus validating a subnet, which, you know, because uh, you validate the C-Chain first and then you validate the subnet second. And I think that that's something, you know, if you start uh, looking at, uh, decentralization process um, that you'll see a lot more uptime, quicker speeds if you start uh, reaching out to some of those people, even just beyond, um, uh, you know, going with GoGo Pool. Lonzo, I see your hands up. I, I will, I will. I, I love hopping <laughs> the mic when Thor with Thor Fies up here. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. but I, 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 if, if it's okay, I, I just I, want to address just the validators here just for a quick hot second, and then I'm happy to go into whatever else here. Um, but I, I totally agree. Um, one of our aspects here and one of our core theses is, is this communal growth and this, you know, uh, project, you know, a projects forming essentially a family of projects um, to allow, you know, a, a rising tide lifts all ships. We want to heavily uh, influence our incoming gaming partners to participate on the validation side as well as through directly through our DAO to influence the way that we develop and what tools we put, you know, what development resources into. Um, we're trying to really turn the Eclipse, uh, you know, gaming chain here into the C chain for gaming. We want it to be a completely open platform, decentralized in nature, and an ability here for everyone to be able to thrive on an ecosystem with some custom tools that no one else can offer. Yeah, that's that's really good. Um, we was you were speaking earlier about a grant program. Um, is that just open to people who are buying games, or um, is it open to other builders as well to build tools and uh, protocols in your uh, ecosystem? And what type of tools and protocols would you be encouraging to? Um, come over and build on the Eclipse subnet? Oh, man, I love this question. So we have two different incentive mechanisms um, in the way that we're releasing our mainnet. Uh, the first one is going to be through our airdrop competitions. We have, um, you know, a significant amount of airdrops that will be going out to community members and people participating in, you know, uh, you know performing transactions on the chain itself. Uh, our grant program is specifically designed towards new games coming out, as well as some pre-existing teams that are looking to potentially move on and venture into a cross-chain environment. Um, we want to be working directly with indie game developers, with people out there that are, you know, coming up with some very innovative gameplay loops, um, very innovative, you know, games themselves, things that people like to play. Um, and then we want to be able to, you know, fund them in a Web3 context, whether that's helping them set up their own liquidity pools directly on Eclipse that we fund, um, or we can directly provide capital assistance to new games and people that are looking at, you know, people in the audience right now that may be thinking about wanting to venture in and to start up their own Web3 game please don't hesitate to reach out. I know we haven't formally put out the forums and all of that for people to log in yet, but if you're definitely interested, don't hesitate. Shoot our account at DM and we'll happily uh, get in contact. That's super dope, man. Well, we are starting to approach, approach the half an hour mark again. Um, we can roll into another uh, market rundown from josh hughes for those that missed it and then uh we can open up the floor and have some more people come up onto the stage and maybe uh shoot some questions at the uh, uh projects that are still up here and maybe hear from some other projects that are in the crowd as well so yeah josh give us another market rundown bro all right here we go folks Number one, we got Cock in you, uh, throwing up a huge candle since the last time that we spoke. Uh, we're up on the 24 hour, now 36, almost 36.5. Uh, and uh, sitting at the 6 hour, up almost 11, 10.86. Uh, market cap 
reaching for the $90 million market cap there on Cock Emu and uh, looking at 84 or 88.5 million sitting at 88.4 million. Next up, Kimbo also following up uh, the Cock Emu co- uh, and uh, reaching for that $8 million market cap sitting at uh, uh, about 17 flat for the 24 hour, but most of the volume coming in here on the six hour. We have Husky, OG meme Husky, coming up on the six hour, found some footing, um, and coming up at uh, 1.1, but still down on the 24 hour, about 4%, and market cap sitting at 4.1 million. Next up is uh, Gek Amy, still trying to find that footing, looking like a small consolidation pattern, in my opinion, and uh, uh, coming in with a market cap of $1.8 million, uh, down on the 24-hour, 13.6. Then we have Lucky, Lucky City at that $1 million market cap, up on the 24-hour, 32.03%, and uh, yeah, a little bit of a downturn trend from the giant god candle that happened yesterday all right now we have the next up is a a little bit from the nft ecosystem here on avalanche dokio uh number one by market cap right now uh down 5.7 percent for floor price over the last 24 steady down 2.75 but small joe's expansion is up Seven or uh, up 2.59. It was up almost 6% earlier. And then uh, Negalopolis, which I don't know what's going on with that over there, is uh, down on the 24-hour, about 30%, sitting at uh, 29.6%. And then Dakabi, who we've had up here in the space a couple of times, uh, also down 8%. That was your market update. Boom. And uh, we'll be looking forward to uh, giving a little market update roundup here at the end of the space. And uh, if you guys aren't familiar with this space, maybe it's your first time tuning in, uh, definitely feel free to uh, share it with your friends. Maybe put a comment down there in the uh, the comment section. We're going to be chatting with some of the coolest projects here on Avalanche. And uh, I'm Jay Hug. That was your market roundup. I'm going to hand it right off to Naldo or Alonzo. Thank you very much again. That was our market rundown from the Honorable Josh Hughes. Does it excellently. It's immaculate every time. It's just amazing. One of my favorite parts of the show. Uh, now we got got um, Eric. Up here from um, Dogs with Crocs. How you doing, Eric? What's going on with you, bro? What's up, Lonzo? Oh, man. Just not too much. Just got off of work, chilling in the space, listening to all this great alpha that we're getting from Thorfi and Tradepool and all these guys. Man, this has been, it's been a good space, man. Thanks, man. Any updates from Dogs with Crocs? Uh, no, I just I guess I could announce that uh, we did send the winnings to the, the, the winners yesterday on the space so all winners were paid so thank you very much for being a gracious judge and selecting some fire ass memes thanks man pleasure was all mine so any any questions for uh, any of the guys up here uh, i was listening <clears throat> you know I, I when thorpe i was on the other day uh it really got me digging back into that. And man, I, those guys are really cooking up something big. And uh, I really, well, I really want to dig back into those docks again and, and get my, get my nodes hooked up and ready. To go. <laughs> well, so, uh, yeah. the, well, good news is that those nodes that you bought two years ago are now the emission source for a gaming blockchain. Um, so uh, I think there's a lot of people who maybe checked out uh, over the bear market, thought, oh my god, all nodes are dead. Uh, nobody's going to do anything cool in this space. Uh, might want to take another look at us and uh, get caught up. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, and, and I almost say that I, I, I kind of faded you guys there after the, the whole debacle, man, but kudos to you guys to keep building and, and to get where you are now, oh. man. That is 
that is something. I so appreciate it. And I'll tell you right now, when you faded us, I'm damn sure we or, or we deserve that fade, right? Um, you know, it's one of the learning lessons that come, right? Uh, you know, when I, I, I think most people here know my story, but I was a DJ uh, before Thor 5 started, before Thor 5 launched. I was getting rubbed in Snow Dog and Snow Dow and all these other rebased DAO oh, tokens. Yeah. yeah, during the previous cycle, right? Um, we were naive when we originally launched, and certainly we did not expect to build our emissions up to 600,000 nodes. Um, so it became a very long-term issue for how we're going to systematically address each one of these fundamental flaws and be able to maintain price action once we've been able to do that. Very happy we've gotten to that point now, but it took us a year of work and it took a lot of really fair criticism from guys like you. So I got to say nothing but love and I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah sure thing. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to mention that, uh, uh, give a little tease with for Dog with Crocs is that uh, we are in the early stages of planning an NFT mint, which I know that's kind of the, the status quo for a lot of meme coins, but we are really going to take our the best interest of the community in mind with this. So we're not going to rush out any kind of, you know, half-baked idea. So, Well, speaking of uh, meme coins uh, that are also doing mints, I see balls has just come up here. How are you doing? I'm sorry, Lonzo and Aldo. Every time I come here, I, I just turn into a host. I'm really sorry. I'm going to shut up after this. But... <laughs> Uh, balls, I want to hear from you, brother. How are you? Hey, what's up, fam? I might sound like a robot because I'm on my headphones right now because I'm still technically working, so don't hate. But I'm doing good. It's been a busy day, a lot of stuff going on in the background. We're at 1343 total mints at the moment, uh, which means we are technically eight away from doing another giveaway. Uh, so once we hit 1351, we're going to do another three AVAX giveaway to the holders of 1301 to 1351. Um, seeing all these memes that have been coming through uh, for our meme competition um, that's going to end on the 13th has actually been really funny. I've seen some really good ones today. Um, you know, you can definitely see where the bots are coming through who, who can't follow the rules, but, um, you know, it's definitely been a fun fun day for me just laughing all day while I've been in the office. It's been a good time. How about you? Oh, we're vibing, bro. We're vibing. We're a community here just chilling. Yeah, but I, I got to listen to your, uh, you know, your your current updates and everything. And the more I hear about Eclipse, the more excited I get um, to to see what you guys have been working on, especially where you guys came from and the pivot that you guys have made has just been beyond phenomenal. Um, so you know, super super excited for your, your Q one in twenty twenty four coming through and all the all the love from the community that's is going to be coming through to come uh, come your way for the subnet. Um, I see a lot of great things that are going to be happening for you guys in the future, especially with the gaming subnet where other games may not be able to get their own subnet, but they can come to you guys and expand on your own um, and give back to the community as a whole. Hey, bro, we're one AVAX family together, right? Us old school boomers here, us two years old plus projects, <laughs> grabbing our lower back as we're, <laughs> our knees are hurting as we go up the stairs, and all of you new young bucks venture again. We're one space together, we're one community together, and it's our community and our culture which is going to make our space win. Yeah, 100%, man. I, I, I completely agree with that sentiment. It doesn't wear, matter where you come from, what community you're part of. It's not about being aligned with one community. It's about being avalanche aligned and getting ready for the bull run as people start seeing that we're growing and we're moving, that they feel comfortable and excited to be here. And you're already starting to see that movement. It doesn't, you know, you can see people are, are starting to cross over and they're seeing that avalanche is here to stay, you know. So, you know, I'm excited. Um, hopefully, you know, when Buenos Aires you know, next year, is it next year? Yeah, next year's coming through. I'll be able to see uh, nothing but smiling faces and get to connect with everybody that's going to be coming through like yourself. And J-Hug, are you going to Buenos Aires too? First Buenos Aires? Hell yeah, I am. I'm going to get drunk on a beach. Done deal. Listen, I'll buy you, I'll buy you a round. It's done deal. Uh, you, you can notice me uh, because I'll have a super fancy suit on. Well, actually, it's not super fancy. It's just like uh, it's a uh, die sublimation. And then I got to talk the avalanche uh, at, uh, foundation into letting you make like an avalanche one. You know, <laughs> let's get that going. I, I'm not going to lie. I thought your fancy suit was going to be one of those tuxedo T-shirts. And I was going to laugh my ass off if that was the case. <laughs> no, no. Um, um, die sublimation into imprint, And then uh, usually 
something I, I don't want to do like the super reflective one like last time um, because it's just uncomfortable to wear. I think I'm going to do uh, nylon dye sublimation and uh, and get some cool patterns on there. Yeah, speaking of merch, by the way, shoot us a DM, bro. I'd love to have a conversation with you. Well, we have a meeting tomorrow. <laughs> I'm sorry, my, my calendar is so crazy, I always forget. I have to check in the morning to see what my next day looks like. Um, I'm looking forward to it, I'm pumped, let's have that conversation. <laughs> Yeah, I love the energy, man. This is this this is how you know Thor is making moves making moves in silence, right? He doesn't even know when he has the next meeting, but J Hug sure called him out. <laughs> well, I mean, in, in in my defense, yesterday I did nine calls in a row, so uh, I'm 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 a little bit uh, loopy brain now. I'm not gonna lie. Um, Beam, you've had your hand up here for so long. I'm sorry, bro. I'm not even respecting the rules. I'm not putting my hand up. I'm so sorry, man. I'm gonna go and mute. You please take it over. Yeah, that's funny, Gray. <laughs> Thank you, Thor. Fi, my guy. What's up? Hey, uh, Lonzo, Naldo, J Hug. What's up, guys? Blessings on blessings, man. And to everyone else uh, in the space, uh, this is a great conversation. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to be definitely uh, shooting you a DM, Thor. Fi. Uh, my team and I have been on, uh, we've been actively uh, engaged behind the scenes. Um, we are building and uh, we have a lot of moves that are to be made. And one of them specifically, you hit on the head uh, with the with the gaming. Um, that's like it's a very very powerful thing right now. It's extremely important um, as far as uh, building a brand. Um, I think that um, um, you want to get people involved. You want to get the community enthrusted um, into what you're creating. Um, you like you know when you're talking about uh, merch, you're talking about um, uh, clothing and 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 gear and kicks and. And then everything that goes, you know, all the above, you know, the usual suspects. And then on top of that, you know, you turn around and you add uh, gaming to it. So now you're getting people into a game where you can get get involved. And then, then you, you're talking about now you can jump into the metaverse. All right. And then now we're talking about now you're you're getting even deeper, you know, and I, I, I'm not going to get all the way deep because we have a lot of stuff that we're that we're pulling together and it's coming from different different angles. And it's just phenomenal. And uh, oh, man. I, don't we, tease we, me like we, this, man. I want to know. Yeah, I want to yeah, know. Yeah, Get so in our DMs, for, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, well, most of the, most of my community, you know, these are my everybody in here is family. So you know, but uh, um, for the most part, you know, um, um, I have a film team. Um, and we are a web, web three uh, film team that has been uh, manifested from uh, IRL, a um, uh, culmination of uh, of directors and uh, film crew and um, uh, you know award winners um, across the board. Man, just a blessing. And on top of that, um, uh, music uh, producers, executive producers. Um, we have a, a, a radio station and uh, merch already uh, on. Online, just a bunch of stuff ready to go and so we're really really um uh like really focused on trying to build a game around this film that we're getting ready to film here in the next uh, few months and uh we want to uh also build it around the actual uh merch as well and so uh we definitely want to talk to you um and pick your brain um, you know, we're, we're, we're really, really just reaching out to the community because, uh, I've been out here for a while. Um, I've, I've literally checked the temperature of the community for a very long time now. And, um, I've, I've con connected with, with all these beautiful people in here. Um, you know, uh, uh, J hug. Um, I started out with, with, uh, with my, my boy, Johnny down there, my best friend, Johnny and Lonzo and Naldo and all those guys, um, freaking Hanks. I started with them. I, I mean, like literally like learned so much with this team it's absolutely phenomenal like i'm serious like i couldn't even i couldn't have asked for anything better i mean i couldn't pay for the knowledge that i've been blessed with being around these guys over the year over this last couple years so um but you know that being said i don't want to take over the, the the space but um i absolutely love uh the avax talk space um i love what what my family's doing out here because avalanche uh, we've been bullish on avalanche you know, we've been here. Um, we've been grinding with Avalanche. Um, and, uh, like, I rock my, my Avalanche hoodie, I swear to God, like three or four times a week. 
Even when it's even when I'm wearing wearing, you know, a, a, a shirt on top of it, I still I'm still feeling the avalanche across my chest. It's on my heart. You know what I'm saying? That's real talk. So um, like let's let's really, really, you know, connect. Um, I want to connect behind the scenes with you. Um, I'm I'm I know my team's going to be excited uh, to talk to you as well because we've talked to several people. But, you know, gauging um, teams, ga gauging builders, um, it's 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 uh, it's something you have to find a team and, a, and builders that fit. You know, you have to find builders that fit your fit. Um, you know, you, there's 80 billion people out here doing different stuff and, and building and, and, and creating and some are doing good and, and some are rugging. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, you want to make sure that um, that you're creating the right atmosphere so that you can run in the future with longevity. And I so, yeah. love it. Yes, I, I okay. love it, bro. That's our thesis. I mean, like, that's our ethos as a whole, bro. Um, you know, as one of the only node projects, us and our friends over there, Vapor Nodes, of uh, Vaporfy, uh, VPND, you know, we're the only ones left from our industry, and that's because our industry is a very hard industry to be able to last a long time in. Um, I love it. I love the way that your team is building. I love the vibe and the culture that you're talking about here. We totally see it. I am super down. Jump on a call with us. I am so down to give you the kits and the caboodle.